Hi, and welcome to my next tutorial on how to encode video. In my previous tutorial, I showed you how to encode a 3D uh, Blu-ray to a side-by-side or over-under, and uh, I explained a specific reason why you encode to the maximum bitrate output of 30,000 and that's so you can go ahead and do a two-pass encode on third-party software because if you also remember I mentioned that DVD fab crashes if you try and do a two-pass encode and that's the alternative way to correct that because then all you have to do is just load up another program like for example Ripbot you click on the add you go to where the uh, encode is I have mine outputting to a large hard drive it's outputted to here and yes I'm well aware that this is not the same video after you click on it you click open and you wait for it please wait demuxing audio streams and yes this can take some time This program does not have any type of GPU acceleration to it like DVD Fab does. It uses CPU acceleration only and a two pass encode on fast computers can take upwards of about four hours just to do one pass. It all depends on what you're encoding. Alternative programs are Handbrake previous versions of Handbrake do not support full side-by-side. -side. They will not support any resolutions above 1920 by 1080p. Current version does support uh, full side-by-side -side resolutions of 3840 by 1080p. Another program that you can use that is very complicated is MeGUI. The only bad thing about that program is it's not user-friendly it's for advanced experienced users only and it doesn't do an X copy on the audio it re-encodes it no matter what you do Ripbot and um, Handbrake are the only two programs that do a X copy on the audio X copy is it takes the uh, the original stream and copies it And of course, like I said, it takes a while for it to uh, demux the audio streams. One thing that you should know about Ripbot is that it requires specific pieces of software other than uh, itself to work correctly. And uh, the best programs to use for, uh, sure, I think there's like two things that it specifically requires that is included in a codec pack uh, located at codecguide.com and I can't remember what they are I think uh, one, one of them is the Haley Media Splitter the other one I don't remember this also requires uh, Java which of course you all know where to get that and the other thing hmm, I can't remember what the other thing is 
There was four things that it required, and two of which were included in the k Light Codec Pack found at uh, CodecGuide.com. You can choose any one of them that are found at that website that you want. Uh, I just happen to use the Mega Pack. Okay, when it's finished gathering the information, all the options will be selectable. Also, you'll know that it's working correctly because if you look down at the bottom here in your task manager, the Haley Media Splitter and the FFD Show Video Decoder is functioning correctly. If these two do not show up, there is a problem. And of course, this can take some more time. Sometimes it's quick, but sometimes it's not. I've actually sat here for a good 15 minutes before I finally finished gathering the information. And now the, uh, the programs are starting to do their uh, little flickering, and it is done. Okay, now, for this to be playable on a 3D TV, since it is a full side-by-side -side conversion you want to make sure that you select the main 4.1 default and it should say default there too this is a newer version of Ripbot previous versions do not have this it doesn't list it like this and then what you do is you click on this little box right here and you make sure it's set to the main profile it's level 401 and the maximum bit rate is 50,000 if you go to change this to say the high it changes it to a max bit rate of 62,500 that is extremely high and it will not work on your TV chances are the video will lock up you can put it to a base if you want but main is pre preferred Click OK. Now, here's where you can select constant quality or two pass. Constant quality, come over to the CRF, and the, uh, the lower number depicts a higher quality and a larger file size, and the higher number depicts a lower quality and lower file size if you're wanting to use constant quality. Constant quality is a single pass. I prefer using two pass. You can select the uh, bit rate that you want. And if you noticed when you change this, this little box right here changes. This is the file size. You can specifically lock the file size, well it's going to be approximate anyway, to any one of these selectable file sizes. I do not recommend using that. That is going to be way too big. Uh, typically on a 8-bit encode, you're going to want to use that. And you notice how whenever I change that, the bitrate changed. Now, you'd want to output it to probably about that size because that's a good uh, KPBS. And the video is going to look pretty good. And when you come over to here, this is the audio selection. This is DTS. It, it, I know it doesn't show the HD part on there, but it's uh, picking up the uh, HD content as well. Or you can select no audio if you wish. The X copy stream will only work on the MKV selection. This will copy the uh, DTS HD audio stream. If you're using it on, say, for example, an LG TV, you're going to want to downsample the audio to something like this. When you select that, it'll just change it. You can uh, add a language if you want. It doesn't really matter. This is English language. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right there for demonstration purposes. And if you notice that the bit rate increased, your video quality is going to be ever so slightly higher when you don't use the DTS audio. On MP4, 
the DTS audio is copied, but it downsamples it. it. Has a maximum of 320 kbps, and it's constant bitrate. I've used the ABCHD a couple of times, but it doesn't uh, work as good as it should. I mean, it's okay, but it still requires a uh, another piece of software whenever you go to burn the files to the disk. Basically, you're creating a uh, a Blu-ray uh, DVD when you do this, or you can. This uh, I've never been able to successfully get it to work. But since how uh, most people prefer the MKB container, we will just go ahead and leave that there. And click on your properties tab now. Okay, now this is a must. If you wish to convert this to a half side by side, you need to crop it. Click on automatic. Well, actually, no, you don't need to crop it. Sorry, wrong thing. You need to select the size. And whenever you set it to do not resize, it will output to a full side-by-side. -side. Click on preview script. Give it some time. It will start halfway in between the clip and you got yourself a full side-by-side. -side. If you click on this, it will play it. Click it again and it will stop it. Close this. And now you want to do a half side by side so it'll play on your TV directly. Click on this. Now I'm going to click on the previous script. It should put it to half side by side. It looks a little bit funny, but it is halved. If you crop, it will look a little different. Click on automatic. Please wait. It automatically cropped it. Preview the script. Well, it didn't show the cropping. Yeah, that's why I don't like Media Player Classic. It doesn't display things correctly. But anyways, that's how you would do that to make it work on your program on your TV. Now, if you click on this, you can uh, change a few other things. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't allow you to because it's automatic. You can also change the output speed, and you can denoise it. But I don't ever use that. It doesn't really matter. Now that we've uh, got our hat, well, hmm. oh, okay. I forgot that this program has a little bit of a glitch in it. When you click on that, you have to click on that. It will gather the information. And now you're ready to click on done. Well, that's assuming that you set your output path to the correct path. Now you can go ahead and rename this if you want. It, it, it's entirely up to you. Now, if you're uh, if you're like me and you have some space issues, <coughs> you'll want to uh, select this. This is 10-bit encode. This will only work on computers. What this basically is supposed to do is theoretically, instead of using an 8-bit encode, it uses a 10-bit, and it basically increases the amount of bandwidth that the video is uh, put through and supposedly you can decrease the file size to say half and you shouldn't technically notice any considerable decrease in the video quality versus a 8 gigabyte over a 4 gigabyte uh, file. Uh, it works best on higher bitrate videos that have been uh, outputted in DVD fab over uh, already pre-compressed files because I've noticed some pixelation in some of the files that I've been recompressing because of my space problems but uh, I only recommend this if you're planning on using a computer to play back the file oh and by the way it does not work in PowerDVD whatsoever it, it, 
it'll play, but it, it looks terrible. It pixelates all over the place and jumps, all kinds of other glitches. It uh, it'll play back in uh, BLC, Media Player, and I've never tried it in uh, Media Player Classic. But if you're uh, wanting to play it in 3D on your computer, it works uh, perfectly in uh, NVIDIA 3D Player. And it'll probably work also in Stereoscopic Player because it's basically the same uh, program. But uh, once you're done with that, you just click the Done button. Seems how I'm going to go ahead and switch this thing back to Do Not Crop and Do Not Resize. Uh, I automatically did that. It's supposed to stay there. It'll stay there if you don't crop it. Once it finishes gathering the information, see I'm wanting to output a full side by side because I personally don't care much for the half side by sides as I've noticed that it reduces the quality. And I want to copy the DTS sound and all I basically do is this. I will change the uh, file name. I'll get rid of the underscores because I don't care for them. Okay, this would be a X264. DTS HD 10 bit. And I want to put a little gap in the 3D and the X. Oh, I also want to do this. Pull side by side. Save that, and you click done when you're done doing this, and when you're ready, make sure it's, the box is checked, and you click on your start. I will go ahead and start this just to show you how long it might take. And it may take a little bit before it uh, actually does start up. So, uh, see that? It's a little bit faster. Note, this number will drop over a period of time. See that's already starting to drop rapidly. It'll probably on a on a 10 bit encode it usually takes my computer approximately three hours per pass. Sometimes the second pass takes a little bit longer. But uh, that's basically what you need to do. If you have any questions just ask and thanks for watching.